All right, welcome back, Algebra Express. We are in Magic 3.6. <clears throat> uh, and so we are going to talk about the graphs of functions in this section. So last time we talked about functions, what they look like symbolically. So for every one input, we get exactly one output. So if we get one X and we get multiple Y's for that X, that is not a function. So we want something that when we plug it in, we're only going to get one output. Um, so they want us to evaluate a function from a graph. So they say recall, we have our function name, our input, and our output. So we're looking at this though. So we have our function f, our input would be the x variable and our output would be the y variable. <clears throat> so if we're looking at this, they want us to use the graph to answer these. So if we're looking at f of one, this number one is sort of like it's taking the place of the x spot. We're looking at one as our input. And maybe the axis aren't really labeled very well. But this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis. So we should know these sorts of things, hopefully, by now. <clears throat> and so if I want the x input, or the input of 1, I have to go to where the x is 1. So where my x is 1 is right here. And so I look up and down where my x is 1. And where my x is 1, I'm getting a point right here where my y value is four. <clears throat> and so f of one is four. If I want to write this in order pair, the ordered pair would be the point one four. So this is a little bit of extra work that I'm just doing, just to hopefully bring around the concept of what's happening here. <clears throat> so they want f of a negative two, so go to where x is in negative 2 and give me the correlating y values, what this is asking. So we're going to where the x is in minus 2. We're looking right here. We're looking up and down till we see this point. And hopefully what we see is the y value here is a minus 3. Okay. Now... They're asking something a little different. So for what values of x is f of x equal to 0? So if we look, this 0 is like it's taking the place of the y now. So they want x values so that we, when we plug it into our f function, it's going to spit out 0. And so the, the 0 is sort of like it's taking place of the y now. I'm looking at the x-axis. Now we're looking over here all along the zero axis. <clears throat> so where y is zero, I have two values. I have one where x is a negative one and one where x is two. There's two values, one where x is a one and one where x is two. <clears throat> Um, so take mental note, when they give it like this, f of 1, we're plugging the 1 into the f. This is an x value, they want a y value. But when they ask for f of x, they're giving you a y value. So this is their, like asking, what are the x values for where y is equal to 0? So if you wanted to say y equals 0 instead of f of x equals 0, that would be valid as well, and it would might help you get there. Uh, so the next thing we want to talk about is the domain and range. So this is the same sort of thing that we did on the last uh, lecture notes. We're doing the domain and range. Our domain is the x values. So we're looking along here. We look at this. We have a minus 2, a minus 1, a 0, a 1, and a 2.
And now I'm looking at my range. With the sword bridge on bracket over here. That's a bracket. <laughs> okay, so now we're looking at range. We go left to right. We go bottom to top for the range. So minus three, minus two. We have zero and we have four. So now we're going to look at the next graph. We're doing the same thing for the next graph. Okay. Although you might notice, maybe it's worth noting, like these are all what they call a scatter plot, right? Where they're just singular points. Our domain and range look like singular number values. This looks a little different. It's a curvy line. Okay. So what does this say? F of four. So this four is taking the place of what value? So the four should be our X value. So we come along here. We look where our X is for, and now we're looking up here at our graph. So our graph has an X value of four when the Y is two. And if I wanted to, I could do the same sort of thing. Point on my graph, if I'm writing that down, <clears throat> I can do this as an X comma Y. We're looking at f of a minus three. So this is my x value of a minus three. I'm coming along here where my x is a minus three. I'm looking at this point. I'm looking along here. My y is a minus one. And now we change up the question a little bit. For what values of x is f of x equals three? So this is like where my y is equal to. So if I'm looking along here, I'm looking where my Y is. I'm looking here, I'm looking left and right where my Y is three. I'm looking here, and I should also look at that point. So I'm looking at those two points. I'm looking at what their X values are. So if I come down here, this X value is a minus one. If I come down here, this X value is three. So for what values of x is f of x equals 3, this is when x is equal to minus 1. Now I'm looking at my domain. So I'm looking at this thing. My domain is all my x values. So I want to look left to right. So if I'm looking left, the furthest this goes left is minus four. It's doing all these numbers up to positive four. Okay, so I, if I try to do something like this, I think this is probably like the first thing. Right, we were listing out numbers in the previous one, so maybe you want to like continue on that trend. Well, the problem with this is like I can always pick a fraction in the middle. So if I pick minus 3.5, that should also be in our domain. And if we list them out as single numbers like that, that's not going to work too well. So how do we list this domain? And we've talked about this before. This was a previous lesson, um, but I believe it was just a single number line. Now we're expanding it to the Cartesian number line, right? And so we're going from minus four to four. We want to include everything in between those two numbers. And so this goes back to our interval notation. We have to write it as an interval between minus four and four.
Okay, we want to look at the range. We go left to right for the domain. We go bottom to top for the range. So we look down. The lowest this thing goes is right here. It is a minus four. We're going to go up. So some people look right here and then they're like, okay, it stops. No, it keeps going. It keeps going past that. It keeps going to four. So maybe this is not the best problem because our range and domain are also the same. Um, our range is going to be the same as our domain, right? It's just kind of coincidence. It's not always going to be the same. So we're going from minus four to four in our range. They're trying to get you used to this. I think mostly the function notation and being able to pick values off of a graph, right? Doing a little bit of a review, do we remember what this interval sort of thing looks like? And can you distinguish like this the thing being an interval from this? They call these singletons is what it is. It's a single number. It's a little singleton set. but this is what points are gonna look like, right? Single points. This is what like an, an interval is gonna look like. Okay. So next problem. Number two. They want the domain and range of this thing. So going off of what we did, domain is my X value, range is my So what are my x values? So go left to right. The right most. So I'm going right. I'm going right. Some people like look at this five and they want to stop at that five. Our graph keeps going, right? I know the like. I know the the paper stops right right here. But this line, it keeps going right. And it keeps going, it keeps going like the energizer button or something like that. So it's going off to infinity. I feel like the energizer bunny was something that they taught me. I don't I don't think he's around too much anymore. Although I could be wrong. I feel like that's one of those references that's kind of uh, getting old. Uh, so range, <clears throat> we want to go bottom to top. So how far down does this thing go? We're looking at this graph, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down, down. How far down does it go? It keeps going. That goes off to infinity in the negative direction. So negative infinity is how far down this thing goes. And we keep going up. We go up, we go up, we go up. The highest this goes is three. So I think the main thing that people do is they'll, they'll look at this and they'll, they're supposed to pull off a Y value, but for some reason they'll look at their X axis or vice versa, right? They'll look at the wrong axis that they're supposed to be drawing from. So if we're doing the domain, you should only be looking at your X axis, right? If we're doing the range, you should only be looking at this Y axis. Don't, don't crisscross them, right? Which is easier said than done, but that's why we practice this, right? <laughs> Be aware that it's a thing. Try not to do it, right? Okay. And I talked a little bit about this. Um, so for something to be a function, each input has to have a unique output. So something that breaks a function That has one 
So if it has multiple outputs, the smallest number of multiple outputs would be two, right? So if it has at least two outputs with the same input, that is not a function. And so the thing that we is this thing called the vertical line test. So if it does not pass the vertical line test, it is not a function. So this thing would not be a function because it hits at least two points, right? So <clears throat> another way you can do that is if you have a straight line, a credit card, a ruler, something, you can slide that ruler across there. If it ever hits two points, on your card or your ruler, it is not a function. So we're looking at these things. We want to determine whether these things are a function. So we're looking along here. If we do this sort of thing, we move our ruler along. You might notice it's always gonna hit it at exactly one spot. We're never gonna get two spots of where it's hitting, right? And so this thing, What is that? Terminal with it? Yes. Uh, I don't know why I'm putting a T on my yes. So um, I was about to say yes, this is a function. I'll combine the one word yes. Um, so determine whether the graph represents a function. Yes, this is a function. And we want to determine whether this thing is a function. We do a vertical line test. So it is going to pass it right there, and then the second we get past that first little point on our circle, we're gonna start hitting two points at the same time, right? And so this is definitely not a function. And there's a lot of sort of, sort of like vertical lines we could draw where it's not going to be a function, right? Something like that. Okay. And I can't remember if they still have circles in this class. If we go over circles, it'll be over like towards the end of the semester. These we will talk about how to find the degree of the functions that look crazy like this in a few months, probably. It's coming though. We'll get there. All right, so they want us to graph a few things. So they haven't really given us any way to graph things that are higher than like a first order linear equation, right? So we don't really know how to graph squares, cubics, quartics, anything higher than like a single power. Um, and so the method that we have is the T chart. That's the only method that we have. Uh, we don't have any more solid method, right? And so what I want you to do is I want you to throw in a few numbers. I would start with zero. I would get some negative numbers. I would get some positive numbers. And I would go do that right now, like pause the video, hack away at those things. You can pick your own numbers. The numbers I picked, I guess I'll go ahead and throw them out there. So we can have them. Minus three, minus two, zero. I think I picked two. Um, So you should be able to do this. You should be able to plug in values. If I plug in zero, that should be the easy one. I do zero squared minus four. That's gonna give me minus four. If I do two squared, Four, this should be zero. If I do a minus two squared, that's in four. 
Oh, it's also going to give me four minus four. This should be giving me zero. And if I do three squared, minus four, it's going to give me nine minus four. It'll be giving me five. If I do minus three squared, minus four, I'm still getting nine minus four. This should be giving me five. Okay. So I have this pre-mapped up on Desmos. Um, let me bring that up. Share the screen. Look at my Desmos. So I'm going to bring up the points. So these are the points that we mapped out. And so hopefully you have these points graphed out somewhere on there. And the next sort of thing we want to do is we want to draw a line through there. So you probably sort of know what your square uh, function looks like. It looks like a parabola. It should look sort of like this thing. And so hopefully your graph looks sort of like this. Okay. And so I got a quick sketch, so let's jump back to the paper. Quick sketch of what it looks like, so you can have it in your brain. So they want us to answer things about the domain and the range and the x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So my domain, so I go left. How far left does this quadratic go? It goes, it keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going. So this arrow, I know it's not, it looks like it's pointed up, but it's pointed up and to the left, right? And so it keeps going left. So it goes left all the way. It goes right all the way. And our domain is our input. And hopefully this makes sense. Um, because a lot of times when we talk about domain, we don't actually want to think about what the domain is. We want to think about restrictions on the domain and things that we can't do, which will be a little more obvious in the next one, maybe. But we want to think about things we can't do. We can square any real number out there. It's not going to give us a problem. So hopefully that reinforces that our domain is everything. There's nothing that's going to give us problems when we square it. The range of this thing how far down does this thing go? Here. Um, how far down does this thing go? It goes to minus four. I didn't ask this, but do I include that minus four? Yes, absolutely. The point on the graph, we include it. And I, I think I automatically just kind of included things in the previous problems. I probably should have asked y'all, do I include them? If it's a point on the graph, you include it, right? And don't you ever include infinity. I don't know what Buzz Lightyear was on, but we don't reach infinity and we definitely don't go beyond it, right? My x-intercepts. Where does it go across the x-axis? I actually have them figured out over here. Um, so it goes through at minus two zero and it goes through at two zero. So maybe knowing your x-intercept from your y-intercept, make sure you get these things straight. That these are the minus two and the two, and this is the zero and the minus four. Okay. Now we want to do the same thing, different graph. So my suggestion was always, my favorite thing to plug in, 
is zero. I would try to plug in something negative. I would try to plug in something positive. Um, and this is a square root function. So if you know numbers that are really easy to take the square root of, I think those are the things I would go with. And I think those are the things that I went with in my notes. I said something like, I could take the square root of four, I could take the square root of nine, and I'm gonna 16. I'm gonna run out of room down here, but, okay. So the first thing, if I want to take a square root of a minus one, and let me remind you, I don't know what imaginary numbers are yet. I'm, we're only working in real numbers right now. So if I talk about square root of a minus one, we're only talking about real numbers. That doesn't exist. Does not exist. I don't know. Um, it's not a real number. We cannot compute. Does not compute. Uh, square root of zero. And we haven't exactly talked about how to find square roots yet. inside a square root, and they come out as one. So square root is zero, and you can do it in your calculator as well, right? Square root of zero is going to give you zero. And it's kind of a silly thing, right? Zero times zero is zero. And one is also kind of a silly thing, because one times one would be one. So square root of one is also one. You can do square root of four. You probably already know what square root of four. It's two times two, so it comes out as a single two, right? Square root of nine is three. I picked the easy numbers because because I, <laughs> I want to take square roots of them, right? Even square roots. Square root of sixteen is four. And that's already going to be off my graph, ain't it? Okay. So let's go back to screen share. Let's go look at this Desmos for this guy. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I can leave this one. This is the guy I'm looking at now. If I want to graph those points, it should look something like this. So now I'm graphing those points. And so now I draw a straight line. And so reminder, this thing should not go into your negative x values. It's not going further left than zero, zero. Okay, so we're looking at this thing. And let me do a stop screen share. So plot those points, get it down, and it should look something like that. So it looks like the best way to sort of describe this is it's like half a parabola on its side, right? It looks maybe like we took this thing, turned it on its side, and only took half of it. Okay. So we're looking at this thing, our domain. We want to go left to right. The furthest left this thing goes is right here. So the furthest left on the x-axis, the furthest number to the left is zero. It goes right, it goes right, goes right. Keeps going right. Off to infinity. So left to right, bottom to top. So how far down does this go? We're going down, we're going down. It does not go any further down than right here, which is the origin, which is the zero. 
we're looking at this thing. I know it looks like it's going right, but it's also going up really slowly, right? So it's going up and right, and it keeps going. That's off to infinity as well. Okay. So we talked about functions, we talked about square functions, we talked about square roots, talked about how to determine a function graphically, and now the last thing that we're going to talk about here is absolute values. Uh, let me shove some papers real quick. <laughs> and so they say the absolute value of a number so one of the ways you, that you can define absolute values, and this is the way that they do it, is it's the distance between the number and zero. So the notation absolute value of A means the absolute value of A, so they're giving you the, the lines that mean the absolute value. So this, that's the notation we use. So if it's a minus three, Minus three is three away from zero. We're like one, two, three, counting them. And this is what they mean. It is three away from zero. The distance there is three. So distance is always positive is another way to think about it. So if it's a minus three, it's three. If it's zero, it's zero. And five, positive five remains positive five. So they want you to describe how do you evaluate absolute value? You're not probably going to go to your number chart and think about this every single time someone gives you an absolute value. I know I'm definitely not going to do that. So they want you to describe the numbers. Where did I put this in? I got distracted by the people. There they are. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So this is what I would do. So if it's negative, that's really the one sort of scenario you need to really worry about the most, right? If it's negative, what do you do to it? You're going to make it positive. And I said, if it's zero or positive, I would just, let's say otherwise, right? Otherwise, you can leave it alone. If it's zero, it's zero. If it's a positive number, it stays positive. Okay. And so now they're going to put this concept of taking absolute value and they're going to put it along with some PEMDAS. So they're acting as the as sort of parentheses is what, what the absolute value kind of looks like. And so we're going to do the thing inside the absolute value before we take the absolute value. So the absolute value should be the last sort of thing that you do. And so we're looking at this. We're looking inside the absolute value and we're trying to crunch the numbers inside the absolute value. So we see multiplication here, we see addition here. We should do this multiplication first. So five times the minus two should give me minus 10. I'm adding four to that. So minus 10 plus four is going to be what? Minus six. And I'm taking the absolute value of just a single number, minus six be positive six. Okay, so we did some PEMDAS with an absolute value. Now they want us to do an evaluation problem with an absolute value. So this should look almost exactly the same, except we're plugging in a number first, right? Absolute value, two times x, 
don't want to put X in there anymore. We can subtract two. We can throw in a value sign. So now we're looking inside of here. We're doing multiplication before we do that subtraction. Okay. And the last thing we want us to do, so we did some work with an absolute value. Now we're going to look at a graph of an absolute value. And so the first thing I'm always going to plug in is zero. And I think I plugged in, what did I plug in? Minus one, I plugged in minus two, I think. I would have one, two, three. Okay, so if we plug in zero, We're going to get 2 times 0 minus 2. I believe we're going to minus 2. Positive 2. So you should be able to plug in things. You should be able to evaluate these things. You should be able to get these other numbers before I put them up, I'm hoping. And if I plug in 1, 2 times 1, and then I'm going to do 2 minus 2, I believe 1 is going to give me 0. 2 should give me 2. 3. If you're smart enough, I don't think I was smart enough, to be honest. <laughs> you might notice you already did three. When X is three, my Y is four. So if you're keen enough, you might be able to save you a little bit of work on that one, huh? Um, let me do one more. Two times a minus one. Minus two, minus two. Four and when I plug in minus two, I think I'm gonna get minus four, minus two, minus six, and that become positive six. So I have a few points I need to plot here. So let's go plot them on some Desmos. So let's do share screen, bounce on over to here. I don't need this one anymore, and I leave it. And so these are the points that you're gonna end up plotting. And so you're looking at this thing. You're probably asking yourself, what, is, what does this look like? I have some points going this way. I have some points going this way. Uh, so some of you might know, some of you may not. But the shape of a absolute value looks sort of like a V, right? Maybe it looks like you're playing pool or something and you hit a bank shot. Uh, so that's what our absolute value is going to look like. Uh, huh. And maybe, maybe let's look forward. It wouldn't hurt y'all. So if I do y equals, and I don't do the absolute value, what does that look like? Ah. So I think we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But if I just do the line 2x minus 2, it looks like half of this absolute value, right? And like I deleted the other half of that line. Okay, so I believe this is the last thing we had to do uh, work-wise. There's a few functions on the last page, and let me say this about these. Ooh, we're not new share. Let's stop this share. Let's go back to this page. Um, there's a few functions. They give you library functions, and so they're throwing you these sorts of things, and what I would say is like don't memorize like point by point these things that's not what's expected right what we expect you is to sort of have a sort of like general understanding of what these shapes look like if i'm graphing a square it looks like a quadratic if i'm graphing a square root it looks like that quadratic on its side right just half of it if you do the negative square root just in case you're wondering 
And if we take the middle, we actually see the other half of that parabola, right? And that's why you only see half of the parabola. It has to do with the fact when you square negatives and stuff, things become positive, right? So we don't get the other half when we take the inverse operation. Um, so I know like this is the first time you've maybe seen like some of these things. Um, and so with that said, I'm not expecting you to memorize these and have them memorized by tomorrow night, right? These are things that are gonna come up and they're gonna come up again. And we're trying to get them thrown out in front of your face and we got to start it at some time. This is probably the first time we're throwing them in front of your face, right? And so this looks like a quadratic. We talked about this one. A cubic, it goes up and it kind of like almost levels out around the zero, right? And it does that sort of thing. A cube root. So we get the positive. With a square root, we cannot do negative square roots, but we can absolutely do negative cube roots. Three things multiplied together, three negatives multiplied together give you a negative, right? And so we do get the negatives there. So we don't get that sort of issue where we have to do, pretend like we don't know what imaginary numbers are, right? These other ones, the identity, the y equals x, that's the 45 degree line that goes in the middle there, right? Uh, it goes, it's the diagonal, is another way to describe it. If I did y equals what, negative x. It would be the, the negative diagonal, the other diagonal going across, right? So they don't give you that, but Hopefully you can kind of deduce a little bit of that. Uh, one over X, the reciprocal, that's not gonna come up until a little bit later when we start talking about rational functions, I believe. Um, so I think that's in Roxwald even. And we're in the, the end of Marichek. I believe next time we actually get into Roxwald, Y equals a constant. So these are the, oops, excuse me, the horizontal lines that we were talking about. The absolute value of X, that's the V shape that we we're talking about. Or you can have another line. We talked all about lines last time. And so just getting these sorts of uh, pictures in your head, the general sort of picture on this thing. I don't know why my next flux is coming up now, but I'm at the end of the lecture, so I'll see you all in class.